Hey everybody, it's Tanika Howard here and we are here with another Her Talks. This is the 2020 and review edition and it is called Trifling. Some of you are probably like, what does trifling mean? Why is she calling things trifling? Well, head over to h2gleadher.net and read my latest blog called Trifling and you will totally understand exactly what I'm talking about. But we're actually just going to be counting down and talking about the trifling moments of 2020 tonight. I have some of my friends with me here. I got some of my girlfriends here. So I'm going to bring them into the virtual studio space so I can introduce them. So I have my girlfriends here. See, they're ready. They're hype. I'm ready. <laughs> Whole conversation. This is going to be fun tonight. We, <laughs> I have Felicia. She is here. Yes, girl, wave. And then we got shoulders down here. We got Miss Kiana down here. Look at Miss Shoulders. And I'm here, shoulder now. I'm a chill of lady. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to have so much fun this evening talking about trifling. Trifling for short, but trifling acquaintances to give you the whole, the whole phrase. But some people, they didn't go to the website and read the blog. So I'm going to go ahead and recap what is a trifling acquaintance. This is directly from my blog. Um, a trifling acquaintance <laughs> is a sneaky, shady person with whom you have general knowledge and occasional contact with. Your conversations are very limited because they tend to get out of pocket. They also are untrustworthy and will lie about the simplest of issues. Mm. They can be found suspiciously hiding in the shadows like a serpent waiting for the right moment to wreak havoc. Mm. Now, what do y'all have to say about my definition of trifling acquaintance? That's right on point right there. You put that in yes. Webster. Yes. Right on point. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and make that one of my 2021 goals and put that right on in Webster. Yes. Because we all know somebody mm -hmm. that is a trifling acquaintance. And we and we we tend to just kind of like breeze over the fact that they are trifling. And I'm like, that's the adjective that best describes somebody. If Yeah, it's very negative and you should feel very negative around this person. The right. energy that they're going to give you is very negative. So 2020, when I, when I, in my mind, started recapping from January to now, thinking about 2020, that was the best thing, that was the best words that I could find to describe 2020, because it wasn't great, it wasn't over the top, it wasn't over the moon, I didn't really feel like empowered, I, some, it, it was some days I felt defeated because of the stuff that was going on in the world, mm -hmm. and, the, and, the, and the thing about it is, in 2020, I don't care who you are, black, brown, Puerto Rican, Haitian, it doesn't matter. We all felt the effects of the things that happened in 2020. Right. And I was like, man, that's crazy how in one year things happened and it affected everyone. And we all dealt with it in different ways. Mm -hmm. So so my first, so so my three, my top three um for 2020 although there was many sneaky acquaintances uh trifling acquaintances that made their debut in 2020 my top three was um the coronavirus um police involved um killings around the world and then the presidential elections and how and i want to spin this because i don't want to talk about things in a negative context um or people um in a certain aspect but the presidential election and its effects on brown girls, because we got to win. We finally got to win. I feel like we got to win. So um, the presidential election, election was one of my one of my highlights of 2020. Uh, what do y'all think? Did I hit the nail on the head with my top three? Or yes. did yes. I miss one? Are there any honorable mentions? Add relationships <laughs> because and relationships on all levels, right? Um, because mm. I think with the coronavirus, it brought some people closer and tighter, you know, mothers, daughters, sisters, brothers, cousins, like whatever it is. And then in other aspects, it brought people farther away, right? Because when you're in a house quarantine with someone for you know, let's say potentially two weeks, and the issues that you may have had in your relationship, you kind of just like didn't um address. 
because you're busy at work or doing a whole bunch of other things to take your attention away from it. Well, having all of that removed and you're just looking at this person face to face, you have to face those issues. So on a good side, if you're able to work through it and both compromise and, and be great, awesome. And on the flip side, you know, depending on who you are, it could be positive or negative, you couldn't have worked through it or you see more or you get that confirmation like, I need to walk away from this or I need to cut this off. And then, you know, some relationships, you know, kind of fell apart. So I would definitely like add that in there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can definitely say that. I can I can co-sign with that one saying mm -hmm. relationships. Um I I tell you, I'm one of those people that when I see the red flag, I tend to walk away. And you're right. This during this time of isolation, it showed me who certain people were. Right. And so it made it even easier for me to walk away mm -hmm. from the relationships and stuff like that. I'm like, I, I think personally, I entered one bad relationship and got into a great or relationship. So I'm happy right now. Yes. In my personal life. So I'm excited for 2021 mm -hmm. as it to my personal relationships. Um, how did that work for y'all? And the personal aspects. I know we got friends, we got family and all of that stuff. Let's really get down to it. Let's talk about it. Like relationships. We we are three African-American women, very smart and uh, gorgeous women. Let's talk about the relationships off the job. I'm coming off the top rope. OK, I'm going to start and then I'm going to stop and I'm going to let Kiana go. So <laughs> for, for 2020, I had set up a goal, right? A resolution and I called it the year of yes, right? Because, you know, as women, and we do this, we'll sit there and say, oh my gosh, I want, I'm in a relationship. But then when somebody approaches you, it's like, oh, what are you doing? Get away from me, right? So I was like, okay, I'm going to, whoever, you know, ask me to lunch or ask me out, ask us for them, I'm just going to say yes and just see where it goes. And so the two people that I, uh, you know, said yes to the first one, it was long distance. He was someplace else. And then again, when you're a woman, I'm 40 something. So when you're in your 40s, you've established yourself at a certain level. So you expect that person to come with it. And so the person that um, a mutual friend has set me up with, he was 40 something. And then, okay. He had no furniture in his apartment. It was an air mattress no. and a TV. And I was like, okay, well, how long were you in that apartment? Oh, you know, it was, it's been about a year. And he was like divorced from his wife with that apartment like a year ago. I was like, mm, a year. And I was like, so you're not going to buy a bit? You know, whatever. I'm like, you just told me you bought two brand new Jordans like two weeks ago, which we know that's $500 off the rip. But you can't buy a mattress? You know, that right there was like a no, right? And then he didn't have, he was on his parents' medical and dental. He was I on his parents' car insurance. The apartment wasn't in his name. I was like, stop. And then um, he was like, oh yeah, cause you know, you in the military, so y'all get free medical and dental, you know what I'm saying? I was like, I'm not your meal ticket. So of course that ended after talking to him for 30 days. So then I was like, okay, all right, I'm done. I'm gonna chill for a minute. And then I met someone like a week later who was local. And I was like, okay, he had his own house. The stuff was in his own name. So you think it's kind of promising. No, dude was psycho. <laughs> he did not like respect, you know, my boundaries. You, you know, he overstepped constantly, constantly. And the final straw was when he came in my house unannounced and just, oh, yes. No. Yes. So after oh, that, that was part of my trifling moment. Like, dude, are you cr are you crazy? You know, and then he would just say certain things that made me think that this man is not on the up and up. Now, I will say I do watch a lot of ID channel. Right. So mm -hmm. when if you <laughs> so whenever you meet someone and then two weeks later, they come at you with the, oh, you know, so so if we get married and, and are you going to put me on your life insurance? Dude, two weeks on my life insurance. <laughs> and then, right, right. And then to make the comment, I think it was within the same week. Oh, you know, I, I can't do nothing to you, huh? I can't do nothing to you. Everybody be all over me if I did something to you. And so that was like, well, well what you planning? Like, you asked about my life insurance. You saying you can't do nothing to me. My uncle lived 20 minutes away. Like, he has no problems popping off on somebody. Like, are you crazy? Right. 
So that was, I'm still in my, well, no, I got five days, four days left in my year. Yes. I don't seem to me saying yes, is, you know, anymore, but it, um, it, it taught me as in, I'm a wait on God. <laughs> God has to literally sit there and slap me and say, okay, Felicia, this is it. And I'd be like, okay, you can have my phone number. Cause like after that. Well, well, here's the thing. So you said that 2020 was the year of yes. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it's like asking God for patience. You know, that he's going to challenge you with everything that's going to test your patience. Right. right. So with you saying the year of yes, God is going to test you to see if you're going to say yes to everything. If you're going to listen to him and heed what he is saying to you, right. and you're going to say no at some point because it, yes, he is. Yes, he is going to do exactly what he said he was going to do. Mm -hmm. But he needs to know that you're not going to just say yes to everything. Well, yeah. It has to be moved in the direction that he wants it to move in. I know. So, so I think that you've been tested. You've mm -hmm. been tested. And so God is pleased with you saying, this is not right. <laughs> he's around the corner. Whoever this, this man is, he's around the corner. He's going to have everything that you're supposed to have or everything that you desire to have. Um, but you have to wait on it. Oh, I feel you. And I think by going through that, it really was like, okay, let me sit down let me sit down and do whatever. Cause you know, everybody has their moments, but I was like, I would rather be single and kicking it and being my fabulous self than dealing with all that, all that trifling mess I dealt with for that period of time frame. I was like, nah, I can't like, I'll just sit down and wait and then just focus on other stuff. So that's my try. One of my trifling moments. Okay, your, your relationship, your relationship goes Fit the bill of a trifling acquaintance. <laughs> <Girl>. See, <laughs> Kiana, what you got? So, I want to say so. I've been so I've been divorced for um, two years now, and so um, at the start of 2020, before we knew that it was going to be the 2020 of a plot twist, um, I have uh, you know talking to my friends. I felt like I was in a space to like date date again. And um, I lost a bet, so I had to get on um, dating apps. Ooh. So, uh, <laughs> you know, so I was married and in a relationship for like 10 years. So I've been out of the game for a while. So, you know, this was new for me. But it definitely, um, initially, it was definitely like an ego booster. Mm -hmm. I was like, I, I should have got on this when I was going through my heartbreak because mm -hmm. these men were extremely nice. And, you know, being in San Antonio... You know, for some reason, they it comes off like they don't like the brown skin girls. So, uh, you know, it just that to have to go from a space where you feel invisible to, you know, talking to individuals. Um, when I lost the bet, it was, OK, I have to stay on these this dating app until the virus ends. And this was like the beginning of March when we thought it was just going to be, you know, a month or two. Right. So um, I definitely it's been a year where um, I've had a couple of parking lot dates. <laughs> I've had a couple of, you know, trying to meet up, trying to find that happy medium because, you know, anytime you meet anybody, you do want to see them face to face. You do want to have that moment. But then they say, where do you go? Because you can't come to my house because I watch too much ID. I watch too much Snap, Fatal Attraction. <laughs> like, you can't come to my house. Right. And I'm not one of yours because, again, all the shows I've watched, I don't want to be in your backyard, Barry. I just, you know, trying to find that happy medium. And what I learned was, um, I used to put all eggs in one basket and focus on one person um, before, you know, it was set that we were exclusive. So I had like a starting lineup. And <laughs> then I was like, you know, maybe a starting lineup and a backup. So I was like, maybe 10 is too many to be talking to at one time. Let me bring it home down to five. Um, and with that, over the time, I just felt like somebody peed in the dating pool. <laughs> and, and now I just need to be still. Uh, until, you know, whatever is to come. To me, all the things that, that you all talked about initially with um, those other pieces we would add with the virus, the other big thing that happened with me being actively military is Vanessa Gillum. And so mm -hmm. if anyone who doesn't know, you know, that was um, an army, army private who was sexually assaulted and ultimately they found her body where she was murdered and it was yeah. two and a half hours from where I'm at. So mm -hmm. then going through not only being 
a black American, but being a female in the military and then this virus, it just was a lot. And um, so I'm, I'm glad I noticed that I'm over the hurt of what happened to me in the past because I didn't want anybody to pay for something they didn't do. But I'm also not eager where I'm just willing to accept anything. Right. So I'm like, OK, so just need to come right. So now, you know, it's cool. So that was um, really time. You, 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 you said that you were over the hurt of the past. Yes. And you were ready to receive what was to come. Right. And so I, I watched in the shadows, not like a sneaky, not like a trifling right. point. But I watched in the shadows a lot of people um, where they didn't take advantage of this time. And what I mean by that is, is that this time was a time for healing if you needed it. Right. And the beauty of healing is during 2020 was that you could get over that hurt and you didn't have to show those visible scars day to day. You didn't have to dress it up with the, with the makeup to go to work. You didn't have to hide your puffy eyes. Um when you had to go to your meetings or whatever the case, because of the fact that you were at home and you were in your own safe space. And a lot of people, I fear that in 2021, because they didn't take advantage of the time that they had Mm -hmm. um, to be able to self, to self reflect, to do the self care um, and to heal from all of those old wounds. They're just going to, things are going to somewhat open back up a little bit. Mm-hmm. And they're going to be back out there. And guess what? It's going to happen again because they didn't take the time to heal, to know exactly what it is that they wanted mm-hmm. and to be able to say, like, to set those boundaries. And as women, it is very important that we set boundaries for ourselves in our relationships to say, like, look, this is a red flag for me. Like you have now crossed over the line or look, homeboy, like this is like the third, you are now a habitual offender. Like I am not fooling with you. Exactly. Like, I have to, you might be cool for somebody, but it's just not for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and let you go and be at peace with yourself. When you, when you know yourself, you're able to, to move on from that stuff. Mm-hmm. You're able to let things go very easily. So that's where I was in 2020 mm-hmm. because I was like, I started off 2020. I, you know what? I knew that that relationship wasn't going to work. And the reason why I say that is because I spent New Year's with this person last last mm. um, last New Year's Eve. And we was eating Panda Express. And I ain't had I no fish like, and no black eyed peas. No, we had Panda <laughs> and, <laughs> and I fell asleep before midnight. Mm. So wow. and then when I woke up, I was just like looking at him like, uh, this this is what my. 2020 is going to look like Mm -hmm. from the relationship aspect. And I was like, you know what? It went downhill. It went downhill until I finally said, you know what? Enough is enough. You cute and all you real fine, Mm -hmm. but this, this is too much. Like we are not on the same intellectual scale. Like you don't read books. You don't have any interest in my business. You don't have any, any aspirations of trying to figure out what it is that I do. My son Mm -hmm. has more emotional intelligence than you do. Mm. This is a problem for me. Mm-hmm. So when he walked out of my house for the last time and I saw his backside, I said, let this be the last time. I don't wish no ill on you, but yeah. let this be the last time. We are done. Right. And I promise you two days later, Kiana, you know this to be true. Mm-hmm. Yes. Like I have been happy ever since. Yes. Because the one thing that I, the door had to, I had to relieve all that old baggage because right. God knew what kind of man he was already preparing for me. Mm-hmm. And so, oh, I God, had, so I had to be ready for that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I had to be ready for that, to receive that. And it was just all divine timing. And, and it's just, it hasn't been great because we have had our bumps and bruises as far as getting to know each other and relationship. But because we're mature and right. we understand how to fight fair, how to communicate, how to understand where each other is coming from and to meet each other where we are, Mm -hmm. you know, because you're coming from a single life. So being patient with one another, like it has been a refreshing relationship to be with a grown man that understands that. So I I tell anybody, you got to wait on it. Mm -hmm. You have to be patient and you have to work on yourself in your downtime so that when he does come around you'll understand who he is and where he is. But during that downtime, 
I'm not even gonna lie to y'all. I'm gonna segue right on into my trifling downtime moments because I had a lot of them. Um, and we all had to have something that got us through 2020, whether it be social media, whether it was reading, whether it was uh, doing self-care as a whole or professionally developing ourselves or just personally develop, developing ourselves. So what did you guys do as far as your own like self-care, self-care? During it definitely morning. evolved, I think, because initially, I think we all took it, we all took for granted when the virus first hit because we thought it was going to be quick. So I know when it first kicked off and they were like, okay, we need to spend at least two weeks in the house. That's when I had all of these resolutions where I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do that. And then it was like, we had to stay a little longer. It was like, wait a second. Then I felt myself like going to a space of like feeling isolated. Um, I'm definitely thankful. And it's so ironic because right before the virus hit, the last time I let, went past Austin was in February. And that's actually where I saw Tanika. And we actually like rekindled because I hadn't seen you since 2015. And it was very random. It was at a work event at the, in Orlando. And when I saw I said, I know you. And yep. like, and so just to see, it was like, I love when you have those genuine connections where you could like nothing, nothing. There was no bad blood. We both, you know, I had a baby and that just, that just changed your whole life. And so yeah. between all of that, um, when we reconnected, it just was like, we picked up where, like, as if nothing, you know, nothing stopped. Um, there were a lot of things that was going on around the world because it was like, okay, the virus and then George Floyd, Vanessa Gill, all that started happening. So for me, uh, starting a book club um, and then being a part of a book club, because at first I was like, this is what old people do. <laughs> but it, it was something I actually like look forward to. And so the first one I was a part of what I loved was we all knew who the facilitator was, but we didn't know each other. And it was like 20 of us. And so we all came together every week and it was just something that like we all like look forward to. And then with the two of y'all, I, I expressed to you all things that I was thinking about doing that I wanted to do. And then it was, you know, you all were my accountability unknowingly where it was like, all right, so what are we doing? You see, you were talking about this. OK, let's do that. So just being able to like push the boundaries with that. So for me, definitely um, having a book club, having that sense of connection on the work side, I had to be a part of social media. And so I was actually able to really connect with, you know, my service and um, do some some really good things, really cool things that I know if it had not been for the virus, I had no desire to get back on Facebook mm -hmm. at all. So those are some things for me that that definitely work. Okay. Felicia, what did you do? For self-care? Hmm. Well, I, um, well, <laughs> <laughs> because over here, work didn't stop for me. Like, I still had to go to work every day. Um, we work from 7.30 to 5, 6 sometimes. So for me, it was making sure I stayed on point with the gym. And luckily, again, for me, the gym didn't close. So I would do like little challenges for myself to stay on point because again, I love to eat. So, so I wouldn't, you know, gain the quarantine 20 or 15. I could have kept it around the quarantine five. You know, that was like my goal. Like, okay, let's just, you know, to do this. And um, so that for me is self-care. That is, that is my church. That is my whatever. I go in there, I kill myself in the gym and I sit in the sauna for like my good 20, 30 minutes of meditation and prayer and I, that is what kept me going. And then, you know, cause I do resolutions every year. So then I was, I actually looked at it and go, well, well what have I accomplished so far? And I realized that there's a couple of things I hadn't done. I said, well, you know what, let's, let's knock this out. Like what's stopping me? And I'll say for my self care, since a lot of it was thinking, right? Thinking of, okay, well, you've always wanted to do this. You always want to do that. Why aren't you doing it now? There's no one here to stop you. You know, I, I was married before. I don't have no person telling me what I can't, won't, shall not do. You know, I can do whatever I want to do. Why aren't you doing it? You know, so that was, to me, my self-care of being able to accomplish things I've always wanted to accomplish since I was a child. And so staying in the gym, the sign was open, thank God, for my meditation and prayers. And that's really, that's really what did it. So my ours life changed. Huh? I said, ours did, our gym didn't stay open. Mm. That was hard yeah. for me. 
Yeah, nothing, so nothing changed over here. Nothing changed. It's nothing changed. I think for me, I was going through so much of transition because I was getting ready to retire. Mm -hmm. And that was the blessing in disguise. Um, any any military person that says that, oh, I can just go from one job to the next, or I can just transition and be okay with that transition. Like they're lying. Right. Because mentally, mentally, you need to decompress and get a different mind state. And physically, you need to get into a different regimen for yourself. So I think around it was right after um we saw each other in Orlando, Kiana. I think mm -hmm. that's when I started to like taper off from even yep. coming to work, even though <laughs> I didn't go on terminal leave until I think it was like July <laughs> officially. And I could not so, stand it. Cause you so, will probably be like, Are you going to work? <laughs> I'm not going to work. <laughs> you my phone. My thing was, I was like, you know what? If y'all need somebody to not come in and we minimize the spread of the coronavirus, then, hey, let me sacrifice myself on the altar of not coming to work. I would be OK with that. Right. But I will tell you, it, it was a lot of joking, but it was it was the best decision that I made mm -hmm. because of the fact that it gave me time to reflect mm -hmm. um, and get what I wanted um, accomplished. I already knew that I wanted to like launch my business. I already had the business in mind and everything was moving ahead. And I said, well, you know, I'm just going to launch it in June. And I was like, you know what, why am I waiting? Like this coronavirus ain't going anywhere. We're all sitting in the house. I need to capitalize on these moments where people are sitting in the house and they're going to take interest in me. Right. So because <laughs> everybody was everybody was famous. Like oh if you go to anything, people, you were famous. You yeah. just had to like figure out the sweet spot of what time was going to get you noticed. Right. So that's exactly what I did was I just I just kind of put my head down and really like focused on my business. Everything wasn't perfect because you know what? At that time I had to be my own photographer, my own videographer. I had to be my own sometimes social media person and try and figure that out. Like it was a lot that I had to figure out, but I was like, you know what? I'm going to put it out there. Yeah. It's not, gonna, it's not going to be pretty, you know what? And it's okay. But then, you know what? As an entrepreneur, I figured out that even celebrities were trying to figure it out too, because they were like, shoot, I'm trying to downsize and cut back on some of, some of this money that I was spending when I was doing these major movies or doing all these things. And they're like, shoot, I'm going to just do my own social media too. I'm going to do my own hair and makeup. I'm going to figure it out. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, if these people over here, if these A-listers are figuring it out, doggone it, I can figure it out too. If people were becoming, getting their businesses off the ground, or doing that, doggone it, I can do it too. So I that's exactly what I did. I fleshed out and refined my business during that time. And like now I feel like 2021 is gonna be a great year. Yeah. Because, because of the fact that I, I figured out a few bumps and bruises and things that worked for me and didn't work for me. You know, it was like a lot of events I was like trying to figure out like, how do you do this virtually? I have this idea, I wanna do this, but man, I had this idea of doing this in this place. Well, I was like, you know, I can do the same event virtually and it cost me zero dollars, yeah. you know, and I gain revenue from doing this event. So I'm like, you know what? I'm totally OK with 2021. Let's go because I'm ready to like really, really, really get into my business mm -hmm. in that aspect. Fitness. I was like, I didn't I didn't gain any weight during. Oh, oh well, good I, for you. <laughs> And I will tell you, if you watch my social media, I would go out and take walks. It yes, would be me and, my, me and my dog. And, you know, and what that was, was me practicing my speaking uh -huh. because of the fact you can't call yourself a speaker if you don't speak. So I was like, I would just go on Facebook, do a Facebook live and just talk about something. Can I hold the interest of people for 15 minutes mm -hmm. or can I hold the interest of people for 30 minutes while I'm walking? So. And then I was like, well, can I motivate people? How would people respond to me just motivating them? So right. it was a lot of I'm playing around with my business and things that work and what doesn't work. And so I was just kind of like, that's the reason why I, I don't think I gained any weight. Um, I was getting more sleep than ever before. Um, I was doing things that I hadn't done in a while. So I was like happy with with where things were going in my own life. Um, and I think it was 
just decompressing and just really like letting some things, taking some things off my plate that I didn't serve me well anymore. That just didn't fit my palate anymore. So I was just like, you know what? I'm scrapping it. And I said, it is what it is. So now I'm just ready for 2021 to see where we're headed with that. But there was some moments on social media. I will tell you that social media, because Kiana, you hit it. You said there was some some times where you were kind of like, I'm not going to say depressed, but there were some moments where you were kind of like, man, I'm sitting here all by myself. And Felicia, I'm sure you probably felt the same way. I'm sitting here all by myself. Like, I don't have anybody telling me left and right. And here you want to play this corny game or you want to do this. You didn't have that. Mm -hmm. And so I will tell you that social media, I think everybody (laughs) flocked to social media. I know, Kiana, you you were not a social media baby, but (laughs) you you became, we welcomed you back into the family. (laughs) (laughs) That's what got us through. Those were the moments that got us through. Um, So what were some of the social media moments that got you through? Because we all had it. Well, I'll I'll say, um, what got me? You know, okay. So I had I had got promoted in the midst of all this crap. And you know, when you when you get promoted, you have a vision of what you think it's gonna look like. Like I had been planning this ceremony for like the past 10 years, right? Mm-hmm. Of how I was gonna be, mm-hmm. who was gonna sing the anthem, having my parents there, putting my stripes on. Like I just had it all envisioned. And then you know, coronavirus decided to come and just nixed all that. So I was like really in my feelings about it. And I guess a little bit selfish, right? Because people were dying and doing all this other stuff. And I'm mad because I can't have this ceremony the way I want to have it, right? My parents weren't able to be there, my besties, you know, all that stuff. But um, I ended up having a promotion ceremony and it was all streamlined, stream, whatever. And being able to have everybody see it and and seeing the videos of my dad and my mom and and all my uncles and all that crap. And it it really was like a pivotal moment for me. Like, you know what? It doesn't matter if they weren't physically here. They were here emotionally. And that's all that mattered. So that was like a social media moment for me because it was all on Facebook. And that's what made me kind of look at things a little differently. That was like my, I guess my moment, you know, of, of, you know, having that in place of, people physically in front of me. And I, yeah, that was great. The second thing was doing the chief chit chat with Kiana. It was, um, it was awesome. <laughs> like I loved being like connected with people and, and being able to kind of like share a little bit of my story and stuff like that, you know, because, you know, promotion is not for me, it wasn't no golden stare, you know, I had to struggle. So being able to share that story, let people know that, you, it ain't it, everybody who got to this point didn't just get thrown up here. I had to crawl, fight, and stab to get here. So that was the second moment that was awesome. And the third is, um, I don't know, this right here <laughs> it was an awesome moment. Yeah, I definitely think that Kiana, Kiana does not believe this to be true, but Kiana has this thing about bringing people together. Yes. She's done that and she's flourished mm-hmm. in 20. 20- whether she believes that to be true or not right because i've watched her and Mm -hmm. and i had nothing but time on my hands so i was just sitting watching her (laughs) and i was cheering her on in the background Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because of the fact that i was like this is the one thing that i've always wanted to see was people being closer together people being transparent about their story people just talking about how they got to where they are Mm -hmm. and Bringing people along, because that's exactly what I envision lead her to be, is we're building the next generation. And so Kiana was, I saw her as a younger version of me when I met her. Um, And I was like, I loved her little feisty behind. Um, And I knew that there was something, there was something, all she needed was the spark. Right. She has, and when I met her um, earlier last year, that spark was a flame. And I was so proud to see her in that moment and then to watch her during the pandemic professionally just get outside of her. I know her comfort zone because I know she didn't want to be on social media, but she brought you chiefs together. And that was a beautiful thing because yes. you don't 
of all, you don't see a lot of female chiefs. Mm -hmm. I know in my 20 years, I was like, when I saw y'all on one screen, I was like, where, where in the hell did y'all come from? Because when I think of y'all, I couldn't send up a flare. Or something. Right, right, right. So I was like, okay, that's great. Because again, the thing in my mind is the next generation. So I can go off and do what I want to do because I know that there are people like people out there taking care of the next generation. Mm -hmm. And, and Kiana is facilitating bringing those people together. Exactly. So I love that about her. And she, I think that she has, she can carve out a niche for herself anywhere in the Air Force. Mm -hmm. Because that's the one thing that I think that the Air Force has. It's it's not all all the time the the personal unity. We have we have unit cohesion, but that's different. Mm -hmm. This pandemic has taught us that we divide. And some people get lost. Mm -hmm. And so um, Kiana was able to virtually bring people back together because her live events would have many people on there, like chiming in and people receive mentorship from places yeah. that they never dreamed that they would get the mentorship from. So right. I know Kiana, she, she did an excellent job during it. And she used her personality. She right. didn't change. It. Like she might have put her uniform on and put put the hair in rags. And <laughs> Just the shirt. Just from the shirt. Shirt. From the waist right. up, right? <laughs> From the waist just, up, like they not gonna get out of it. From here up, mm -hmm. from the bottom, they are just trifling. Right, right. It was really trifling. But the thing is, is that if you knew her, you'd be like, "He trifling from the waist down, <laughs> just straight panties." <laughs> right. Okay. Which is a I, good light. I, panties in a good light. <laughs> Talk right now, and she brought chiefs together right now, female chiefs together right now with the shoulder out. I would still join in. Yeah. I was still join in because yeah. it's the same Kiana, whether she got the short bob wig on or she got the curly fro, it don't matter. Yeah. It does not matter. Because mm -hmm. she's going to bring you the truth and it's going to come from a genuine place. So I mm -hmm. love that. Aww. Yeah. You so, like that, that, me being able to do that, it actually came from pain because. Like me, I felt like the people who I was surrounded around, they had older kids or no kids. And so when this pandemic took off, my son was four. Mm -hmm. His birth his birthday is a week before mine in April. And so his word of the year has been ridiculous. He was like, This is ridiculous that he couldn't go to the park. He couldn't go like everything I signed him up for, we couldn't do. Mm -hmm. And then um, although we did not physically go into our buildings, we still had to be at we still had to be at work. Via Zoom, our government laptops, and so to do that in kindergarten, I was drowning. Yeah. And um, you know, because my my baby was like, I don't know how to do anything. And he did, and he had like five to six Zoom calls a day. Oh. So I was getting up early to check my work emails. Then I would get, like get with him, try to get him on a schedule. And when he learned how to press pause and hang up from his Zoom calls, he would press pause and say, I don't want to talk to them anymore. I already know how to do this. I don't want to learn. Um, I struggled because I felt like I did not have any time. And so when they slowly opened the gyms up, I couldn't, we couldn't bring minors in the building, mm -hmm. even though they at one point had like its own little space and stuff. Um, everything was like shut down. And so um, thankfully I had a parenting schedule, you know, with um, my son's father. And so I just maximized that time. So you knew when I didn't have my son, because that's when I was like trying to batch my content, it pushed so much stuff out when I didn't have him. So when I did have him, I had a sense of belonging and peace because I had to then just, you know, work with the time. And so then it was a CMI, the people that I connect with, who I help, they were all over the world. So I would end up getting up at two, three o'clock in the morning because it's like eight something in the morning or eight at night or it's the afternoon in Japan or whatever time in Germany to assist. And so from having those conversations with like my peers, a lot of them were like, they never met a female chief. And I was like, you know what, we need to do something. And so no one in my group wanted to do it. So I just went on Facebook Live on this one group that had just like boomed out of overnight. And I didn't know what was gonna come of it. And it was so crazy because to this day, a lot of those female chiefs who I've never met in person have written me, they send me stuff in the mail. And um, it's very, 
it felt very overwhelming because I did get a lot of backlash, although I got a lot of like praise with it. Um, but in that space, I just was, I'm like, let me just, I want to give, I wanted to give the generation behind me something that I felt like we didn't have. Mm-hmm. And if nothing else, like during that time, even with um, Chief Whitlow or Felicia, with her promotion ceremony. So even with it having to be online, we all like, I was even able to attend and I did. And I'm like, man, like, even though you didn't, you weren't able to have something face to face to have it like live stream, there was even more people who were able to like be a part of your moment. And then like looking in your group, people were posting pictures. And so if, to me, it, it brought us closer together that I feel like if we were on normal, normal terms that um, would have been overlooked. But yeah, my I struggled because it was so tough having a five, a four to five year old working full time. Then he started school. He went from daycare to, to staying staying at the house where he was hungry all the time. And if <laughs> when we first started, he would walk up, I gotta ask you something. Like he would put his finger off of the camera. I'm just like, <laughs> I, I didn't know if I was coming or going. And so uh, you know, it, it took a second. And I was like, and I remember I was telling um, I was like, I'm drowning. I feel like I cannot like I want to use this time, but I'm like it's so it was so I felt so all over the place. Mm-hmm. And she was like, we just got to find your rhythm. And I felt like I, over time I was able to find it the best way I could. Yeah, that thing was tough, though. Yeah. Yeah. So in between working and mothering and building a business, um. I think that we all, I know I took a breath every now and again, and I'm not a big TV watcher. Um, I just don't have the attention span. I don't know what, what happened along the right. way. I just don't have the attention span now. But what is that must have something that caught your attention that probably wouldn't have caught your attention before, but you got sucked into it? What is that? Did you watch something? Did you listen to something? Did you, what was it? Oh, oh. Lovecraft Country. Oh, I love that show. And that's a good one. I, yeah, I, I, I like watching. TV, but I don't have the attention span to like be dedicated to a show. You know how some people be like, oh, my show every Sunday at seven, I sit down and watch it. I'm not that person. Like, I may watch an episode and then I'll just end up focusing on something else. But let me tell you, I sat there and I watched Lovecraft, Lovecraft Country for two days straight. I watched it straight. That show was awesome. And I'd only plan on watching one episode and just being like, ah, okay, I got so sucked in. I couldn't stop. <laughs> it's so good. And now I'm like, well, where is season two, damn it? Like, I need more. Like, what's going on? <laughs> that show is freaking just absolutely awesome. And the other show, um, oh, so I love Kung Fu Karate action movies. Really? That is my... Oh my God, you a hate man. I'm I'm Bruce Lee, damn it. What is oh, it? <laughs> I am Not so that person. I I'll be up there, you know, trying to fight my son and you know, yeah, do whatever. And he'd be like, Mama, sit down. Right. But he loves it just as much as I do. So we watched Into the Badlands, because you know, he's still here. And to segue, he's one of those relationships where I said on a positive note, like we're such such in a strong bond right now. But yeah, so we sat too. down and watched Into the Badlands three seasons straight. We was just, oh, sh- oh, he beat that. Oh, oh, I said, that's me. That's me, you know, whatever. And it was just, that's another one that I liked the show, but I didn't have the attention span to like to finish it out. And we sat there and watched all of it. And I was like, I am him. That's how I fight. That's how I'm going to beat you down. He's like, oh, yeah, mama, you know. But um, those are the two shows that just had me like sucked. Like, I swear. I'm gonna learn how to fight like that. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. Terrible. P Valley was that for me. I yeah. love P- baby. Listen, yeah. like <laughs> baby, listen. P Valley was that. Listen, I, I have that soundtrack. And figure out how I can be like Miss <laughs> Mississippi. <I'm- laughs> yes, ma'am. I have to watch that. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. It's on stars. It's so good. I was like, I love me a good ratchet TV. And so for me when I would feel myself like I didn't necessarily want to do any self-care, anything that I just wanted to chill. Mm -hmm. I would, I had my go-to either ratchet or go-to something that reminded me of home or that made me feel like I was around people that I like really enjoyed. 
So I was into watching the reality TV. I did. A, I watched a lot of YouTube, and okay. I would find certain personalities where they would have their little talks and stuff. And I'm like, really? And so then I'm like, what do they think about this? Like that funky Dineva, the way that he talks to like us. Yeah. I felt like he was talking to me. So between that, little fires everywhere. At one point, that that was that was that was Bay, and um, I don't know. They had a lot of like different shows. Oh, Paternity Court. Oh, oh baby, listen. Oh yes, Lauren Lake. Oh. So let me tell you, me and my son, we just we watched seven episodes before I was you know waiting to do this, and we be up in there. I'm like, okay, let's bet. I bet you he's right. a father, or I right. bet you this. We be like, look at that baby nose. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. I loved it. And what I liked was if, if they had, like, there were guys up there who would be like, I had a vasectomy, da 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 What I liked was she brought in Lauren, Judge Lauren Lakes will bring in an expert to talk about that part. And so when they brought the expert in for that one, they were like, the, the doctor was like, listen, when you have this, when men have this procedure, 98% don't come back for that last checkup. Yep. And so over 60%, it, it gets back. reversed. Mm-hmm. So every time these men were like, I know she cheated because I had a vasectomy. They was the daddy. Yep, you are the father. <laughs> so if I needed a second to like, yeah, listen, so YouTube and then the verses like Instagram. I love that yes. the celebrities, they they went Instagram live all the time. So the mm-hmm. different verses, like when Monica and Brandy came together, I was here for that. Didn't necessarily care for Patty. You know, that a little before my time. Oh my but, god! Oh I, oh, I was all in for that one. Yes. I, yeah, I, you know I gotta set this one out. That just I love it all, but that you know that wasn't it. So I love it. I'm not. I'm oh, not and, uh, the untold story of uh, the um, No Limit Records when they BT went mm-hmm. into the history oh, of yeah. like it, so there were so many different ones. I was like, oh, let me watch that. That was those for me. Those were the ones that P Valley though. Usually I would never say a show like P Valley, but a friend of mine said, Hey, you look like the light skinned girl on P Valley. You, huh? you, you could be her cousin. This oh is true. Gosh. And so I was kind of like, Okay, I was like, I don't know who I'm talking about, so let me just go ahead and do my investigative report. And that first episode just hooked me right on in. Yes, ma'am. And I watched it, and now I'm like sitting on the edge of my seat, like waiting. But it was the theme song that caught me, really. Mm. I was like, down in the valley where the girls get naked. I, you'll hear me walking through my house saying, hey. <laughs> it's, just, it's just one of those things that was very catchy. But I did like that show. And then me and my son, we watched uh, Emily in Paris um, on Netflix. Okay. What is yeah. that? It's, a, it's about a girl. It's kind of like the modern day sex in the city set in Paris, kind of like. Okay. okay. A young girl that goes off for a new job in Paris. Mm-hmm. Um, but um she's just so <laughs> she's just so out of place in Paris. But she keeps navigating through everything and she makes everything better. Mm-hmm. Um because of the fact that she's a foreigner in their country. Um so it's a, it my son loves the show and it's hard to for him to sit down and watch a show with me. So that's our little must have like but I told him I went to Paris that was my last trip that I took last year and I went all by myself I oh, went to Paris okay. all by myself and yeah, so that, I'm about that. That. you did I really love Paris Me so too. much because of the fact that I was able to that's one of those things that it was like my rite of passage as a woman mm-hmm. as a Come on. As a as a liberated woman, I'm like I don't need anybody to go with me on vacation. Mm-hmm. Like, I can go at it alone, and it's not, that, it, it, it's not that I want to go at it alone. It's that I know I can. You can exactly. Mm-hmm. And so I spent that whole time in Paris. Like I would wake up, I look like the little the little tourist girl with a little backpack on, and I would be walking through the streets with my little tennis shoes on. And just taking in the sights. Mm-hmm. I didn't have anybody saying, oh, I want to go over here. or I want to go over there. I didn't have any competing agendas. It was just me. That's just awesome. Really taking in every site, mm-hmm. everything that I wanted to, just talking to locals, sitting in shops, like sitting in little coffee shops, having a glass of champagne and eating uh, French soup. Because yeah. they don't call it French onion soup. No, they call it onion right. soup. They don't call it French onion because right. they're like, because well, they're in France. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, the first time I said that, they thought I was dumb. They was like, <laughs> yeah, they're going to give you a look. Right. Right. They was like, oh, you want the onion soup. 
<laughs> yes, please. But it, it was, it, I felt so good just being able to do that by myself. Um, and I took in a show by myself and everything. So um, I just felt, felt good about that. So the, I love the Emily and Paris show. And I told my son, I said, if you, uh, if you make uh, straight A's in French, I'll take you back to France. Oh, that's a good incentive. So this dude then got straight A's in French. In French. Oh, get yeah. the <laughs> He has a whole app and everything. And he's just like, watch me work. We go to France when this Rona thing is over. <laughs> and he's going to hold me to it. But I did love, love Paris. It was like mm -hmm. one, of, one of my favorites. Yeah. Okay, so we got Ratchet TV out of our system. Like things that just, because TV helps. Something yes. is different. Like you can just like decompress from whatever mm -hmm. is going on. Um, at the time, um, social media crazes, like things that happen, like we just fell in love with and we just fell into the trap. Like, which one did you fall into the trap with? I can tell you, me, the Savage Challenge, I still have not figured out how to like, get right. on. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to tell, tell you by, by December 31st, your girl is going to be on some social media platform. And I'm going to say, I told y'all bitches I was going to do it. So check this out. <laughs> and if I, Ooh, I got you. Yeah, I real quick, that, got that's you. Cool. But I'm going to be like, I'm cool with this. Mm -hmm. Because I have the courage to show y'all that I've been practicing since, I don't know when this thing dropped, but I've been practicing. April. I've been committed to oh, it. Oh, drop for April? I didn't know anything about the Sabbath week of my birthday. I was like, yeah, so that's when they came out with the remix. Mm -hmm. That messed me up and made me mad when they had a remix. So I was like, I was well on my way with the original. Mm -hmm. so, the remix is better. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. that's that's TikTok. Definitely TikTok. TikTok was good. So I, I love to dance. I, I just feel like there's like a bit of um, trap music in my blood and twerk in my veins that I, I know I'm going to be that grandma. When my son has kids, that's gonna have their tongue out with the little with my blade out, and you are gonna get this hair, and it's like I'm always gonna be that person. You but you know, TikTok it just wasn't. <laughs> I didn't use so I didn't use the TikTok for like the dancing because I was like, that's not. I just I want to do my own thing. But what I liked was Regina Carter, Lil Wayne's daughter. She would do different movie scenes. Mm -hmm. When I when I tell you that girl can do her thing, so I have a bunch of videos that I didn't put out where I'm doing these different Friday, <laughs> do it, do it. Some of the classics where that helped me, and it, it's so funny how like just throwing it down and it just playing it. Um, so I definitely got into the TikTok thing, but I love the way that resonated. Where it wasn't the dance moves that everybody else was doing, hers was more of like different scenes from different big mm -hmm. movies. Mm -hmm. That's what I did. That's the craze. That and then the verses. I love the verses when they had that coming up. That definitely, especially the, did y'all catch the last one with um, G, uh, with the Jeezy and um, the Snowman? Bird. No, it was Bird. the last one was too short, right? Yeah, too yeah, short. Too short. Yeah, yeah. Last one, yeah. Right, right, right. And it was supposed to, and then the next one's supposed to be Ashanti and um, wait, I'm here for it. Yeah, Ashanti and Keisha Cole. Yes. Well, listen, so Keisha, like, if they're going to be live, then I can get with it. Because, you know, certain, certain singers, they have their thing, right? Yeah. The other thing is, when I listen to Keisha, you know I said that I'm over my heartbreak. Uh -huh. But when my You Ain't Shh playlist, Keisha is all up and through there. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I just hope that I'm here by myself because if I'm not, when I tell you I'm a good lip singer, you're going to get this. She got, like, <laughs> she is that, that heartbreak yeah, she yeah, she's like the Mary J. Yeah. Yeah. I don't and know, exactly, I don't know, you know if I'm even here for that versus. I don't really I, I would although I like both of them, mm -hmm. I'm here for like an hour and a half of either right. one. Of them. Well, I won't right. watch that. I'll probably just go to title and just download the playlist and pick and choose what song I like and just keep it moving. Like right. I would never watch them. I just I like the playlist. I'm like, oh, I forgot all about that song. Oh, yeah. I used to have that song. Mm -hmm. And then I'll just do that. I don't like her, like, a, I don't have the attention span to sit there and just watch you. Like, right. if I'm cleaning or something, usually I'm just yeah. doing something and you're just in the background. Right. The only one I actually sat down and I watched was Patty and Gladys. Mm -hmm. And that is 
because their music takes you on a journey. It's, it's, so Patty and Gladys are the same thing to me as Keisha Cole is to you. Um, oh, okay. Their songs take you, I'm just like an old soul. Mm, I just so think it is. It takes me on a, like their relationships back in the day, I could deal with their relationships. But like these new age relationships, like, <laughs> with it like we burning cars and killing each other over these relationships i mean it was just y'all was doing that y'all just wasn't singing about it thank god it wasn't no social media thing. well, well we, we think about, 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 about the children no we just threw grits on people that's <laughs> yeah. what we tell you you know we just wanted to scar you a little bit like, got to attention yeah. real <laughs> like that's the thing, like the attention grabbers. Like I'm gonna pour this hot water. I'm gonna ask Lionel Richie. I bet he won't do it again. <laughs> so that, that that's the reason why I love that one that much. I just I couldn't get behind. Who was it? Jeezy and who and uh, I watched that. Gucci no, Gucci Mane. Now I love Gucci me Gucci Gucci Mane. Mane. Like I I do. But I wasn't about to sit there and watch Listen. for no hours and change. Yeah, I just couldn't get. Y'all, y'all need to. Y'all probably should go back and, and look at it. And the reason why I say that is they have real life beef. I know. So imagine yeah. Jeezy is Jeezy is that old school. If he don't like you, you know it. But he's not going to come there with that energy because he's too smooth. But mm -hmm. the other one, Burr, he came up. <laughs> he, came, <laughs> he came up there. I know y'all ain't ready for me. I know y'all not ready for this. He was like coming for Jeezy like the whole time. And Jeezy was like, now hold on. I extended this invite so that we could go ahead and bury this hatchet down. If you trying to do so, we'll do it. So y'all have like y'all have to do it for the the comic relief. Because it was like, oh, you really, you really big man. You really are upset about this. Hmm. Well, okay. Go back and see. Because didn't isn't the reason why Gucci Man went to jail is because Jeezy snitched on him. I will still have some beef too now if I sat in jail for eight years because you don't know how to keep your mouth shut. I probably would have slapped you on contact. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't have been no songs, no nothing. No. It would have no. been intro music and then a slap. And that's exactly. <laughs> I'd be like, this verse is <laughs> over because I'm about to beat this dude's ass. You know, because I needed this. I needed this. This is eight years. <laughs> this is a slap. Is <laughs> yeah. So, so I, the internet craze was um, 50 Cent. 50 Cent, we was like holding our breath, like who is he about to say owed him money or who he was, who he didn't like or who he was going to clown in her role. And then no I think it was like Cent, who, I love him to death. He I love him though, right. I love him though, but it was, you, it still made me clutch my pearls now because he still would talk about these women. And then Fr him and French got into it. So French then was like, okay, everybody who watched Power, this is what's about to happen. And he started like talking about it. We was like, no, no. And so he was like, it's so 50, because 50 was unbothered. You know, it made him so upset. But that was a to me a, one of the internet for um frenzy things that was happening was who was 50 gonna say all the money? And he had receipts. <laughs> oh, with oh girl, what's her name? With Tia Marie. When he was like, yeah. where's my Yeah, where's my like mom? that's just too much. Like we all have seen her train wreck of a life play out on Love and Hip Hop. Like, let yeah. that girl be. We know she does not have the money to pay you. Leave her alone. He was fine. That girl was running her mouth. She wasn't acting like she had been through a little life. She wasn't humble. Well, that's <laughs> the thing. Right, so think about it now. Tia Marie has been through her crap for what five right. years, maybe eight, something like that. But you know, she keeps going through the same rat race. She's in a hamster wheel, going round and round and round, and she's not trying to fix anything to to do right. better. So I can see why Fifty went in. He was like, "Hold up, you over here running your mouth, still doing the same stuff. You have a great voice. You should have an awesome career, but you doing all this crazy stuff yep. that you can't be where you need to be, and you got my name in your mouth." Run me my money. Let, let's let's do that. You know, she only give him a quarter. She only had to give him a quarter. I think a quarter or a dollar, and she did the bare minimum. But I was like, she need to change her circle of influence. Who is in her circle to be like, baby, come on? Let's but because I love me some love and hip hop, and so when you me watched too. it, I stopped watching it. I forgot whatever's the last season on Hulu. But um, they were trying to help her, but she was all uh, no. I don't, t -t -t -t, you know, just going through all this stuff. And I'm like, man, and everybody done said, when you drink, you lose your mind. You was on tap to be like on, on the track with Beyonce. And then look where you at. Man, I'm going to tell you this. 
it, we know there's a girl code. Even when you get drunk, if you mm -hmm. with your girl, there's mm -hmm. a designated person. If yes. they tell you to chill out, no matter if you think you are okay, you're going mm -hmm. to like, okay, that's my accountability. Whoever this mm -hmm. one friend is, she ain't had that one friend. She wasn't listening the to one the friend. Friend. I think she really? had she had two friends, but she just wasn't, she wouldn't listen. She was like, no, mm -hmm. I'm good. Exactly. No. And now you tearing up people's events, throwing drinks because somebody looked mm -hmm. at you sideways. You couldn't come to none of my events acting like that. I'd be like, no, just give her water. Make her think it's something else. <laughs> and I'm like, because that, no, because as a friend, you're like, I want you there, but I can't because you don't know how to support me the right way. Right. Yeah. Oh, trifling head. That, 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 that <laughs> That's trifling. what you say. That's what you say. You, you put the word trifling in the out. Yes. It's always something. You got to put it down. Right. Behind that trifling. Mm -hmm. Whether you're trifling a hash, you're trifling acquaintance, you trifling bees, you say whatever it is that comes behind that because of the fact that it is what it, it, it gets your attention. Yeah. I guarantee you. If you if I'm walking away from you and we just had a little heated moment and you say, Oh, trifling ass, I'm gonna turn around. You got my right. Right. You right. Got my attention. 2020 did that. 2020 was trifling. Points mm -hmm. that came in and it got our attention just when we thought we were easing up on with the coronavirus. Then mm -hmm. I said, here comes summer and here comes George Floyd, and we was like, "Damn, sneaky, mm -hmm. just sneaky." And then you you think that we're moving moving things, moving the needle, and we're thinking that we're gonna have maybe a peaceful transition of power in the United States, and we're mm -hmm. like, "Damn, we can't get it together." We just can't get it together at all. And so it's just like, man, just trifling. Period. I have to say, though, not that I would want this man to die, but I was actually glad that the riots happened. I was glad that it started the conversations. I was glad that businesses start really looking at the toxic people they have in leadership positions and so forth. And I'm glad that it pulled back the curtain to be like, y'all steady trying to act like they wasn't being racist or they weren't doing this and putting stuff under the rug. Now it's in your face because we're tearing up shit because we're tired of it. And so now, since you're not trying to listen to us and we're trying to be political about it, well, how about I'm about to blow this damn business up? You ready to listen to me now? Oh, now you want to talk to me because I didn't tore up your business or I didn't did this or I didn't did that. I mean, when you back people in a the corner, they're going to start to act out. Any animal does that. Not saying that we're animals, but what I'm saying is, when were you going to listen? Yeah. Things wasn't all great. Things wasn't all hunky-dory. And so this right here was like the camel that broke the straw back. I mean, the straw that broke the camel's back. Like, no, like we're done. But you know what? You about to listen. Now, we I don't, really needed this to happen. We, we needed, needed this it. to happen. Especially looking at the DNI report that happened with the, the Air Force Diversity Inclusion Report and how they even said how they targeted African Americans Ooh. with more punishment, more of a judgment, and everything else. And I'm like, well, shit, I've been through that. Everybody knew that. And then we had different people say, oh, you know, non black people say, oh, that's not true. That's not true. I lost my mind back and when everything happened, I straight cussed this dude out. I said, I'm going to tell you something. Like, you can't sit here and tell me that this does not happen. And I'm telling you right now that it does. And I can tell you each and every time something happens to me on a racist standpoint. I was like, so don't sit there and say, oh, that's not true because I don't do that. But you're the same person that came to me and told me that I'm so surprised that you're very nice because the most of the African-American women I've dealt with were not. They were angry. And I'm so glad you weren't that that stereotypical angry black female. And I was like, is this a compliment? Like, what, what you trying to say to me right now? You know, I said, so I don't know. And so, again, I hate the fact that this, this man had lost his life, taken away from his family. However, I felt like it needed to happen for change. Right. Well, anybody who's not in the military or in, on the Air Force side, along with everything that was on the big news for us, this diversity and inclusion and, and racial report that just so happened to come out right. at the same time was more so of a coincidence than it was a, they had already. So basically, like our big bosses went all the way back, I think, to the 70s, did they say? 70s or the 60s? Yeah. And so they, they sent out surveys 
to people who serve that were people of color and ask them questions. And so with this report though, not only does it, not only what's displayed is the findings of that, of that survey, but they also did investigations for each one of those different things. Yeah. And so they proved that even like with some of those standardized tests that we take to actually get into the military and enlisted or officer side, the way the questions are written are, um, in a way, it's, it is to target us to where we would score lower. Right. To if we're if you're in a unit, and let's say a, a black airman and a white airman commit the same offense, the black airman would get a Article 15 non-judicial punishment, and this other airman would get just a slap on the wrist. Right. And so then it was a like we knew that that was going on because I had got the survey and she was very honest. <laughs> and then and then aside from that. They then came out with like the results of it. So it's 155 pages. But even in these conversations, it it just opened up those wounds because it would be individuals who we work for who would be like anytime we we were then forced to have these conversations. And so then some of my white co-workers or Spanish ones, anyone who wasn't black, initially they would say they don't see my color. I don't see your color. I just I said, no, I need you to see my color. Right. I need you to know me, see me. Now, don't allow that to change your views if that's what you want to say. But then on, to my black community, I also had to have that conversation where I was like, these questions didn't ask us if, if we felt like we were discriminated against. Was it of someone of color or was it someone who was not of color? Right. So some of the most challenging bosses that I had that I didn't like, that I felt like were being harsher on me, were black. Mm hmm. I agree. And when I said that, we kind of had to sit back and I'm like, like, no kidding. And it was like, I would get those conversations where those leaders would say, those black leaders would be like, well, I have to be hard on you because if I don't, then they're going to think I'm giving you a pass. So I was like, I don't even want to work with, for you because I felt like they were going to like, you know, it was like they had, they had to make a scene. And so for that report to come out last week, I was so upset. I'm like, all year, we had the George Floyd incident, the Vanessa Gillum, the virus. So we're going through all of these different things that you want to end the year and rip open this Band-Aid about color. I'm glad they did it. Well, I mean, I'm pushing stuff under the rug. Like they do it all the time. They throw stuff under the rug. I'm glad they did it. I'm like, about time. Well, unfortunately, unlike the civilian sector where if Someone, let's say the CEO of this company makes some type of disparaging comment and it's even in the gray area. Well, they react and respond very quickly. We removed them. Like this person works for this organization. Um, In the military, you have so many layers. Mm -hmm. And that process, I don't know where along the way that process became so like, well, you, you can appeal. Like in the civilian sector, there's no appeal. You shouldn't have said it. Mm-hmm. In the military, you have so many appeal processes. Well, I didn't take it that way, or it wasn't that bad, or this person, you can justify why this person gets passed over, or because of the fact that you say, you can, even the slightest of thing, you can say that a person gets passed over for whatever opportunity. Um, so right. it's not seen as racial or discriminatory in any aspect. Now, with the things that are happening in the world, again, we all felt the effects of it. Yes. So the thing is, you cannot deny this even in right. uniform. So you have to respond. And so unfortunately, yeah, I think it took too too much time because we were starting to try to heal from what was going on in the world. And now you're ripping that Band-Aid off again, saying, here's the survey results. Mm-hmm. With no action. That's the no point. Action. And, and I, and I was sitting on the sidelines yeah. and I watched it. And I'm like, what, what's the action? What is, what is the where- report? I think is that, that, I, that what you're saying? I did a survey, so now I can shut y'all up for a little bit until the next thing happens. But the thing is, is that now we have now figured out that the world outside of the uniform and the uniform there is, it connects. So you have to respond in that aspect. You have to treat somewhat one in the same because now it's just not a military issue. It's a world issue. Mm-hmm. And you just don't happen to be a military person that is you just can't, you can't take one from the other. Right. So just like top companies, they're responding, the air force and the DOD as a whole has to respond now and look at their practices. Um, So 
I mean, that's that story is going to. But here's the here's the good part about it. We know that that trifling acquaintance made it reared its head in 2020. Right. So, you know, right. you know, it's there. So now you can be. Proactive. Mm-hmm. Instead of proactive. You can't sit around holding your mouth talking about, oh, I can't believe this happened. You can't do that now because you knew it was already there. Well, mm-hmm. we knew it was there, but the Band-Aid is now ripped off for now more conversations to be had. So now you have to stay like, stay on top of your top leaders. Like, how are we going to fix this? Like the survey has already indicated. So now what are we going to do? Mm-hmm. And it's, it's a beautiful thing that people like you, Felicia, are sitting in positions where you do have a voice for people like Kiana and other youngsters that you can't advocate on your level. You know, and when the opportunity presents itself, you can speak up um, and say, "Okay, like, what are we going to do? How are we going to change this? How even on our level, Mm. how do we change it? And that makes people feel comfortable knowing that there are leaders out there that will stand up and fight the fight at their level. Because you at your level, you can't tackle the entire Air Force, but you can tackle your backyard. The base. Yeah. Yes. So therefore, that's the that's the great thing about it is that. You stay up at night worrying about the that trifling acquaintance that you know is slithering around mm-hmm. and you can, you can chop the head off. You mm-hmm. can chop that head off right where it is um, because you have that level of influence. Um, and that's with everything that's happened in 2020. We have to understand that that we now see it happening. So now that now in 2020, we were just we were responding because we didn't know how to respond. Because right. we didn't know it was coming. But now we can be proactive, like get our crap together. So that in the event that this or anything worse than that, you know, if, if you thought that was bad, well, somebody is coming up with something far greater than that. Right. So, so now you got to you got to be proactive, figure out, get your own game plan together, get your own playbook together so that in 2021, self-care is always in check. You mm-hmm. always have things going on so that you're never like trying to figure out like, well, I'm sitting in the house for the next six months. What am I going to do? Well, you already have things in place that you're trying to figure out your neck that you already want to get accomplished, that your goals for 2021 won't fall apart because of X, Y and Z. You got to learn that pivot. And a lot of people didn't understand that pivot in 2021. So I think that professionally, you got to learn to pivot. Personally, you got to learn to pivot. You got to just figure out like all those contingencies left left right for everything because of the fact that 2020 taught us a lot. Um this conversation has been absolutely great. Um but I want to keep I want to keep the train moving um when we talk about because you we talk about people like George Floyd, um Breonna Taylor. Um we lost some we lost some good ones in 2020. Yeah, exactly. And even even when when you lose one, it's a good one. Yes. Because it doesn't matter. Like we lost one and it it was untimely. Mm-hmm. And that yep. the situation was untimely. Mm-hmm. Um, we who in 2020 did we lose? Did because I say we because we're all in it together. Who did we lose that you felt the effects personally? Black Panther, chat with bows, bows. Mm-hmm. That thing, when I tell you that thing made me cry. Yes. Not only did it make me cry, but then to know what he was going through. And I would mm-hmm. then go back to certain movies that I knew he was filming while he had cancer to mm-hmm. see if I saw it, to see if I felt it. Then I would go back. And of course, because the internet and technology is so fluid, I wanted to look at interviews that he was talking about. And it's crazy because his messages were so profound where he is like, you have one life to live. Mm-hmm. You can live in these moments. You can't do X, Y, and Z. You can't do, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. And so every movie that man has put out, when I tell you I loved, even before that even, it took our breath away because yeah. it was extremely untimely. Mm-hmm. And when I saw him, the last time he made an appearance, I saw some some memes where they were saying that people were picking on him. He was so skinny. He lost yeah. so much weight. I didn't see mm-hmm. that. Everybody, like, even myself, when I saw him, I was like, ooh. What role are he about to be? What role is he about to be? Exactly. exactly. For him. And, and, and even in those comments when we saw that, nobody was like, man, he looks sick. We were like, oh, or, or no, no one was clowning him either. We were like, ooh. ooh. So between oh, the yeah. two for me, not, not going from the racial space, but the, the two big ones is Black Panther 
and Kobe Bryant and his daughter, although it was right before the virus hit, yeah. like that 2020, it was February. Like it took our breath away where him, it made me, it was crazy because like other deaths I've seen where it has affected like my mother's generation where they would shed a tear. Right. Those two like really took my breath away because it was like, we got the boom, it was him. Then right. they released that it was his daughter too. Then it was, okay, and it was some of her teammates. Oh, and then it was, you know, it was just like, it kept like filling up or whatever. And so just to see that play out, those were the two big ones for me. Yep. Yeah, same. Like, um, I remember I, I took a nap and I woke up to my phone going off and I was like, Kobe, I said, that's a lie. This is fake, fake news, fake news, you know? And then when I saw it on CNN, I said, oh my, oh my God. Like, I was so surprised and so shocked and the same thing black panther because as y'all know i am a comic book nerd <laughs> and i was just really like you have got to be kidding me like because he is such an icon yes and in, in the world basically not even just our community the world like the way he touched everyone with all yes. his girls especially black panther like you saw kids of all races dressed yep. up as black panther that's such a beautiful thing and to such a symbol just to go like that but in, in his prime he was only 43 hell i'm gonna be 43 in a week like just just to know his mortality was right there it's, it's just it hurt it hurt deep it really hurt yep yeah that's the thing i mean kobe bryant and chadwick boseman were right there mm -hmm. in that i'll be 40 next year they're right there in that range like kobe was on mm -hmm. the younger, younger side of that and chadwick was Chadwick was on the older side of that, mm -hmm. but then like to know that I could be in my forties and yeah, Chadwick died of cancer and Kobe died an untimely death. In an accident, so right. Like yeah. things that we do, our day to day actions, like that is such a, a blaring wake up call that you yeah. have to live life to its to its fullest. Mm -hmm. You have to be at peace with the decisions that you make in life. Mm -hmm. And you have to just like leave nothing behind. Mm -hmm, like right. if you have a message to tell, sick or healthy, you got to tell it. If you have something that you want to say to somebody, sick or healthy, you got to say it. Because of the fact you never know, you may you may lay down and you may not wake up. Yeah. Like during this whole pandemic, I know that there's been times where I'm like, I felt a little tickle in my throat. I'm like, Lord, don't take me out by the phone. <laughs> Please don't take me out. Me too. I, I, know, I know good and well. Or my son, I start, sending, I start sending a text message. I love all of y'all. <laughs> 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 that got me sure. Like anybody that says that they're not shaking every time that they get a little tickle in their throat or they cough or they sneeze one too many times and they're like, hold on, you you way past the God bless you kind of phase. Exactly. Like, right now. Right. Mm -hmm. Like this is how serious it is in today's today's environment like I've, I've seen on Facebook and on Instagram you know there's a lot of young people in communities that are dying mm -hmm. and people and their loved ones don't even have a proper ceremony for them well would they in a traditional sense because of the social distancing and stuff like that mm -hmm. like you just have to like just put them in the ground and just be okay with it like you have to you have to hug and tell those people that you that you know and that are close to you, you have to tell them that you love them each right. and every day or every time you you encounter them because of the fact that you just never know. Mm -hmm. uh, Kobe Bryant, that wasn't something that we were like like ever thinking. Like again, we thought it was fake news when we mm -hmm. heard it. Um Chad with Bozeman, we had to rewind the tape to see like, wait, when was the last time I saw him? Did he look right. kind of sick or whatever? You know, and then you're kind of like, oh wow. But I will tell you to chat with Bozeman's camp. They kept his secret. Those are some secret. They teachers. sure did. Mm -hmm. Those are some Ooh, absolute man. secret keepers so that he could be able to continue yes. the race until mm -hmm. the very last minute. Because yeah. of the fact that if people find out you're sick, they use it against you. Yes. If they find your weakness, they're gonna they're gonna use it against you. So salute to his camp. Yes. yes. That kept his secret. Um, and allowed him to continue to go and they pushed and stayed with him to the very end because that that's some true friendship right there. That's some love and support right there. Because I know well, I got some trifling friends. I If I tell them anything, it's going to be on the six o'clock news. Right. Right. 
B I A T M V. And he was married. I think that was the other beautiful he thing too. So you saw her pregnant. love interest. She they yeah. didn't announce that part until after you know after the fact or whatever. Yeah. But I had loved ones that actually passed during um the virus, mm-hmm. and so did um my son. His his great grandmother when his dad's side had passed, and for me, my I had a great aunt and a cousin that passed, and so on that end, it was during the the the. I want to say the spike or like the the peak of the, the virus, mm-hmm. but we couldn't even have they they wouldn't even touch the body, so they had to be cremated because we couldn't afford to keep the body in limbo to see what was going on. And then so, um, you know, I I, I know I talked to both of you all because I was so on the fence about letting my son go um, to see his great grandmother because that was like around June, and I'm like, listen, <laughs> now I'm, I love. <laughs> My ex-husband's grandma, but baby, listen, that virus was real. And I'm like, what are we talking about right now? And so they had told us, like, the, one of the brief, one of the, like, pre-briefs at the at the um the airport, they were like, they they weren't responsible for, they had all of those different disclaimers. And so when my grandmother, when my, when my great aunt got sick, um, it was a, the briefing that we got was they'll have one Zoom call a day. And they were like, no one could come up to the room. No one could come up there. And so when we talked to her, um, at one point she was like, so the doctors was like, either this is going to go really good or it's going to go really bad, really fast. Mm-hmm. And so she was like, so you mean to tell me that I could possibly die by myself is what you're telling me. So the first couple of days when we talked to her, um, she was so sad because the kids that were in there that was around my son's age, their parents couldn't be up in the room. So the, them wanting to have comfort, it was just, it was so sad to watch and see. Um, so like him going to the airport and stuff, I was so on the fence about that, but I'm glad that I, um, you know, I, I blessed that process because um, I'm so big on co-parenting. So, um, but it definitely was tough. And so to see the two, and so although they, they could actually have a funeral, they were very limited on the number of people that they could have. And mm-hmm. so, um, and they, they, he comes from a big family. Like his dad is one of seven, six or seven. And so is, is his his mother. So that to know like everybody couldn't go. Um, but then on my end, they had to they had to be cremated. It was mm-hmm. definitely something different for sure. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, we damn 2020. <laughs> but I but <laughs> right. I'll tell you, I I say that in such a jokey manner, but I heard today, like we had to get go through 2020 to get through get to 2021. Mm-hmm. That's what my pastor said today. So yes. um, there's meaning and there's there's purpose behind 2020. And guess what? We're only a couple of days away from it, and we're still here. Mm-hmm. So I'm super excited about what is to come in 2021. What's I want to pick the, pick the mood back up. What is what is your New Year's vibe? <laughs> like, what's the plan? What is what are you doing for New Year's? Okay, so this is my plan. <clears throat> I am working on my calendar now, so I will go somewhere once a month. It doesn't matter if it's like if I'm gonna go to Wichita Falls or if I'm gonna go to Kansas City or if I you know go to Charleston or go to Vegas. Because I love to travel. There's places I want to go to. And like I said before, there is no one here to tell me what I can't, won't, show, won't do, right? So I'm starting to strategically plan my trips. Like next month, I'll be going to Vegas for a couple of days. In February, I'm going to Florida. In March, I am going to Charleston to see my dad. And then April, I'm supposed to be going to Mall of America. So we have to put the money aside for that. And and that's because, again, we only live once and we have to live life to the fullest. And what is stopping us from reaching these things? The other thing is um, I love to run. I'm a marathon runner. So this year I'm trying to figure out which runs I'm going to do virtually. So I am think I'm going to do the Chicago half marathon and I'm looking for my second one. And then for once a quarter, I'm just going to knock out my 10Ks. And then I have two more books I'm going to publish. And then after that, I'm just going to chill. And uh, hopefully get this assignment to where I want to, so I can be on the beach. And that's yes. all I got. <laughs> yes. Yes. So, yeah. Kiana, what you got plans to do? 
so I'll be taking my talents to <laughs> the Pentagon. And so I feel like my life is in shambles right now. But I'm really, um, you know, I'm excited to see what that's going to bring, what, what's to come with that. So the end of January, um, that's where I will be. So that is definitely an adventure in itself. Um, I was one of those where I didn't go sit. I wasn't comfortable with sitting in um, restaurants and being out and about like that just because when you lose loved ones to it, that thing hit a little different. So yeah. um, I really want to find my balance, though, in that um, I definitely am not taking any vaccines when if I don't have to. I don't feel led in my spirit to do that. But trying to find my balance in that um, because I don't want to. That's, I don't want to live in fear. Um, right. So just trying to push the limits with that. Uh, my biggest thing was, you know, I had I had some personal goals and. Um, just seeing me like being able to check that stuff off is a, a couple of those things I didn't think I was going to be able to do um, that I'm doing. So my, one of my biggest things was to um, I wanted to make some type of passive income before 2020 ended. Um, and so recently I have been designing T-shirts and sweatshirts for Amazon, Amazon merch. Um, and so they sell it a little bit. I'm going to have to send y'all, send it to y'all. So yes, uh, yes. I upload designs and stuff. And so um, I also started uploading low content um, books into Amazon as well. So like uh, journals and planners and stuff. So um, just I've, I've always, you know, so once I start talking, I'm like, man, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, so just being able to just like, OK, let me just do it. So I definitely want to perfect that. I'm very um, I'm nervous, but I'm excited um, to go to D.C. because I've been in San Antonio since 2010. Um, and so this will be the first time I'm moving with the, with my kid. So I think that's, that's pretty much it. I'm just open to whatever is to come. And, um, as much as I thought, I thought I was going to be able to step away from, um, social media at the end, but it looks like I might be around a little bit longer. So, um, you know, we'll see. So I, I really want to make passive income, do something that has nothing to do with the military. You know, I've talked about that with both of you. Yeah. Um, so um, I think that's pretty much it. This this PCS, this move to DC, um, definitely came out of nowhere. I got I have forty a forty five day notice, so um, you know we just go. It is what it is. They but got you know, me. the they biggest lesson happen when it just falls in your lap. Like the right. fact that that job came and fell in your lap with that such a short time frame. I swear, I feel like once you go there, oh my God, you're going to be larger than life. It's going to be so oppor so many opportunities are going to come your way. This is such a positive move for you. I just feel it. And I'm excited for you. And I can't wait to see. Well, thank you. I, I am definitely excited for you. Um, as for me, I think that Lead Her has, I think my business has flourished yeah. where, I, where I know it's a thing now. Mm -hmm. And I am comfortable talking about it. You know how when you start a business and you're like, you you didn't sell as much as you thought, and you're right. like, I ain't gonna talk about the thing because I might have to shut it down a little bit. Mm -hmm. I think that right. I think that 2020 has taught me that there are people out there that need me, mm -hmm. that the people that are attached to me on yes. both that are mentors and mentees. So I am super excited for how I can expand. Um, the brand, um, the business side, because the H2G is the business side. The lead her is more of the influencing and um, and brand brand recognition kind of side of it. Yeah. But um, but the business side, it's flourishing too. I mean, people are trying to figure out how to communicate effectively, and I'm opening so many I ideas. Uh, opening many eyes to the idea that you cannot communicate effectively. Like you're in 2020, your relationship has proven that you cannot communicate. Right. So people are now contacting me like, hey, can you do this workshop? Hey, my family is falling apart at the seams because we can't communicate with each other. Can you do a virtual workshop for my family to show us how we can communicate with one another effectively? Mm -hmm. um, and businesses like small businesses, I've been able to tap into those and like, get um get the possibilities open for them. So 2021, I feel like I'm not gonna have there's not gonna be enough time in the day for everything that is for me and for my business. Um personally I'm super excited about my personal life because I I made this declaration um on Christmas when 
I sent out my Christmas card and it was only me on the Christmas card. And I didn't said, get a Christmas card. Huh? Well, we got to talk about it. I don't think I did. I'm you didn't get the text it. message because it was a text message. <laughs> Oh, but I'm thinking I about it. Look, on Facebook. No, it, there was my territory. Stuff. I didn't get nothing in my mailbox. Okay. We have evolved from that. But I said, you know what? Next year, I said, I make this declaration that um, I see my Christmas card being myself, a man, a teenager, and two dogs. So, oh. um, so if you put it in the, in the atmosphere, it shall come to pass. That's so, right. Come on, so, pilot bag. And he he agreed. He agreed that that person will be a blessed man. So <laughs> yes. So I, I, I get excited for all of these men. I get excited to think about my 2021 because I'm not going to hold anything back because 2020 taught us that life is way too short. Sure so, is. so you have to love hard. You have to love when it's in your face and when it's appropriate because some men are not. Um, in a place to receive our love, true. Um, but okay. it's okay when they are in a place to receive love. Give it as give it as much as you can till it's overflowing. Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, what is your? This is the last thing that we will talk about. Um, what is your mantra for twenty twenty one? Well, I've been thinking about this, right? Um, so, you know, you know how you see people and they start moving in their motion and things are going good. And then all of a sudden, I th- I think they, they get in their own way and they stop and they just stop doing everything. I don't know if it's out of fear or, you know, whatever. And then you're like, well, what just happened? You were doing good or, you know, whatever. And then you go like, well, I don't know. I got scared. I got nervous. And so they just stop. So um, and I've noticed that within myself. So for me, my thing is everything that I've put into place into 2020, I plan to keep moving forward. So I guess my mantra would be, um, don't stop, don't stop and don't think, because I notice sometimes like if, if I'm, if I think about what I'm about to do, I'll be like, oh, and I end up talking myself out of it. Like, for example, if you're about to do 10 burpees, and I can kill burpees when I don't think about it. I'm like, about to knock out these burpees, da da da. I'm good. I move on to something else. But I notice when I sit there and go, man, I'm about to do 10 damn burpees. Then it becomes hard. So, um, and I applied that to other things. When I'm doing stuff at work, when I don't think about it and I'm just moving, I kill it every time. When I stop and think is when I start like um, second guessing or my speech doesn't come out as well or whatever. But for me, it's um, don't stop, don't think, and keep moving. Don't stop, don't think, and keep going. I mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. Because when you know, when you think too much, I know y'all didn't see America's Next Top Model when, when Tara, Tyra is telling a girl, do this or do that, and the girl's thinking too much and it just looks all wrong. But when she's not thinking and she's just doing and how it becomes an awesome photograph, like that. That's me every day, all day. <laughs> Just awkward. <laughs> What's yours, Kiana? I've been thinking about it too. And so for me, I I don't know. Um, one of the things that, that stuck out to me was focusing on key. And so anybody who knows me or is close to me, I like, I pour so much into everybody else. And mm-hmm. so I noticed um, a lot of moments where it was individuals like you, people like you, the people who were in my circle of influence, in my circle that were like, what are you doing for Kiana? We, I'm like, we'll get to me. I got to do this, 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 this. And so um, just intentionally, you know, making sure that I pour into myself. And um, I don't know, like I am the hype man. I have been told that girl is a hype man. I will hype you up and not even say a complete sentence. And just doing that for myself and like just believing in my own sauce. So um, I'm not focusing on key, I guess. Good. And everything that comes with that. But finding my balance because typically I just give myself whatever is left over and not intentionally making myself a part of the priority. So focusing on key. You got to focus on I love that. Mm-hmm. So I think mine is because I love to 
I love to just like leave people in a petty kind of way. I'm just, I walk <laughs> out just being petty for no reason. But right. um, you have to be bold. You have to be brilliant. Yeah. And then you have to be gone. So that is my three. Uh, like my mantra for 2021 is to be bold. Say what you got to say. Don't hold your tongue. Just do it. Just say it. But you need to make sure you're brilliant in what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Make sure it's articulate, it's polished, it's refined, that you have you have everything all together in what you just said mm-hmm. in that book statement. And then just be gone. Don't linger because now you said what you had to say. So now the ball is in their court to mm-hmm. respond. But you don't have to stick around and wait for them to respond. Just be gone because mm-hmm. now you're wasting your own time waiting on somebody else to respond to you. So just be gone and move on to the next because you don't have time to wait on them. So I say, be bold, be brilliant, and be gone. I like I'm that. BBG? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm yes, yeah, I, like love, I love those mantras that you guys have come up with. I hope to see them on your social medias. I hope oh, you to see it. In the next like day or two before, so that you can say I'm ahead of it. I've been planning, I've been mm-hmm. putting this together because those are... Those are brilliant mantras for 2021, um, and they're very catchy. Um, so I I couldn't have have asked two better people to sit down with me and do this kiki and talk about trifling acquaintances in 2020. I appreciate both of you. Like Felicia, you came. I didn't even know you existed. <laughs> Kiana brought us together in a in a social setting and I think it was a book club yep. and it was something about you that I was like you said something that was bold and brilliant like and you don't and you don't you're not a you're not a one of those people that just like talks 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 you don't overpower the conversation so I love the fact that what what you said you were bold and you were brilliant in what you said because I was like man who is she like I've never met her like I mm-hmm. like her and so uh, again and then I immediately just flock to your social media. And then I watched you and like your gym goals. Like I don't post my gym goals every day, but I am in the gym three, four mm-hmm. times a week. Mm-hmm. So I'm not as consistent as you posting, <laughs> posting uh, yours, but I am in the gym. So I love to see the fact that you were in the gym and that you were doing that self care. And then that you were doing something that you loved. You said you were, you're the next generation bringing on your grandmother's and your mother's recipes. Like every mm-hmm. Sunday you bring that. Yeah. And, I'm, and I'm like, man, I'm so glad I don't live in her house. Right. Like I would, I would right. not be in a new state in my weight because I have no self-control because I wouldn't exactly. be like, yeah, why do you think I'd be in the gym so hard? I like <laughs> right. <laughs> Terrible. But I, but I love that about you because every week you're giving us something and I'm like, and then you, you're an author. Like you are an author. So I'm like, I have a copy of your book. It's on my shelf because I did read it. I and I'm it. like, I read it three nights straight and I finished mm. it. And so I'm excited to see what's next for you as far as your published works, because we don't have a lot of African-American women that publish books mm-hmm. that right. have that author title uh, attached to their name. So I'm excited to see that. I'm, I'm honored to know you. So I know that whatever you do, I'm going to be able to support it. and you support me as well. So thank you both for supporting me. Like even just the shares, when you share a post, like that's doing more than, than even giving me a check. Cause I don't need a check. I need people to know who this, what this is and what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Um, so thank you guys both for supporting me. Um, I'm excited for 2021. I don't know about y'all. But I'm super yes. excited for what's about to happen and it's going to be great. I know that much because it can't get no worse than 2020. <laughs> right. It really, the only thing that can happen is a crater hit in the middle of the earth and half mm. of everything from, from the Midwest, half of everything. Is mm. like, that's the only thing that can happen that was worse than that, you know? Mm. So, so I'm just super excited. Um, so I'm not going to get too mushy, but, um, to the audience that has lingered and stayed and watched this, um, this uh, her talks. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. All of our social media handles are um, in our in our uh, 
in our name tag. So please contact, connect, um, get with us on whatever it is, because there's so much that these lead herds have to offer and they are lead herds because they are building the next generation in their genres, in their lanes. So I'm super excited. Thank you guys so much. Um, I'm excited for 2021. So we will see you next time.